Now, today we will be discussing one of the important topics and that is the orthopedics, anatomy and orthopedics and anatomy combined together along with surgery while we have got a large amount of questions asked recently. So the question is important sites of injury and the important sites of injury in relation to different parts of the body. Now, as far as orthopedics is concerned, you are well aware of one fact that there is this long bone, which is the humerus. And the humerus has got various important nerves attached to it at different parts. So as far as the upper end of the humerus is concerned, you know that there is the upper end of humerus, which is very, very liable to get injured. And there is this nerve, which is the axillary nerve, which lies in relation to the upper end of humerus. And once there is an injury to the upper end of humerus, it is usually the axillary nerve which is damaged. In addition to that, you have to remember that sometimes a clinically oriented question that there is the dislocation of the shoulder joint. And as far as the shoulder joint is concerned, you know that it is a joint which usually undergoes inferior dislocation. And inferior dislocation or the subcoracoid dislocation of shoulder joint also leads to injury of the axillary nerve. So these are two important points which you have to remember as far as the axillary nerve is concerned. And as far as the damage to the upper end of humerus is concerned, then going down we have the shaft of the humerus while we have a very important area, the spiral groove also given the name as radial groove. So injury to the mid shaft or the spiral groove or the radial groove causes damage to the radial nerve. So that is very, very important. And you have to remember this radial nerve damage uh, causes multiple clinical manifestations. How it manifests that we will be discussing separately. So you have to remember. Number third is the injury to the lower end of humerus. Now we just discussed upper end shaft. Now the lower end, now lower end may be having the lateral end and the medial end. You have to remember that along the medial end, along the posterior surface, you have got the medial epicondyle and um, on the posterior surface of the medial epicondyle of humerus, there's this nerve which just runs, which is the ulnar nerve. So the ulnar nerve will get usually damaged in injury to the lower end of the medial end of the humerus. Now, Above the lower end, there is the area which is the supracondylar area. area. Now, supracondylar area of humerus is important because it causes damage to one of the other nerves, which is the median nerve. So, median nerve damage causes damage uh, causes uh, injury in the lower end uh, or the uh, uh, just above the lower end. That's the supracondylar area. Now. We have got the brachial plexus, you know, brachial plexus, upper trunk and lower trunk. Once there's injury to the upper trunk of brachial plexus, it causes the herbs palsy or the policeman's tip deformity. So upper trunk of brachial plexus causes herbs palsy and lower trunk causes clumpy palsy. In addition to clumpy palsy, there is the Horner syndrome, ptosis, meiosis, anhydrosis, and ophthalmos, and loss of senior spinal reflex, which you remember. So that's important. In the lower end, we have the neck of fibula. And neck of the fibula, there is the common peroneal nerve, CPN. CPN, common peroneal nerve, is the nerve which is uh, seen in relation to the lower end of in this fibula, and it causes foot drop. In action, there is the hip joint, which is there, and the damage to the hip joint can lead to injury to the sciatic nerve. So sciatic nerve is a relation of the posterior uh, relation of this uh, hip joint. It's a very stable joint, but in high velocity trauma, this hip joint can get dislocated posteriorly and cause sciatic nerve damage, again leading to foot drop because the common peroneal nerve and the sciatic nerve combinedly cause foot drop. In the brain, in the skull, we have got the area over herterion where the four bones meet and there is the middle meningeal artery which just runs in relation to the uh, this place and this causes an uh, important thing EDH and that means an uh, injury to the terion cause extradural hematoma over here EDH extradural hematoma is a very important uh, uh, hemorrhage 
which occurs in the epidural or the extradural space and occurs as a result of injury to the tuberia. Now, as far as the left hypochondrium is concerned, in, in, in surgery, you get that we have got the spleen, which is a highly fragile, highly uh, friable organ, which can just rupture, bleed and cause subdiaphragmatic collection of blood. And as far as the subdiaphragmatic collection of blood, it causes irritation of the diaphragm and there's the referred pain to the shoulder joint, which is given the name as curse sign. So this is something important about the sites of injury, which is frequently asked. I hope you remember these points well and they are frequently asked. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot.